This is the radiographic room of an industrial X-ray inspection laboratory. This cast steel gear blank has just been x-rayed. The x-ray film is in this holder. When the film has been developed in the dark room, it will reveal the internal characteristics of the metal. This is the radiograph, the shadow picture. The x-rays prove that the steel casting is free from internal defects. Now it may be machined to finished dimensions with full assurance that it is internally sound. But this radiograph of a drive shaft flange tells a different story. The dark areas indicate gas pockets and extensive shrinkage. Thus, X-ray inspection provides a reliable production control. By providing a check at the early stages of production, it avoids a waste of machining, prevents serious failures in service. For efficient operation of X-ray equipment, the nature and control of X-rays must be understood. Within this housing, the generation of X-rays takes place. When electrons traveling at a high speed strike a solid body, some of their energy is converted into X-rays. The source of the electrons is a wire filament. When it is electrically heated, negatively charged electrons are released. Now, if we connect this filament as a cathode or negative pole and introduce a positive pole, an anode, the negatively charged electrons will speed toward the anode. A focusing cup around the filament concentrates the flow of electrons on a small area of the anode. This is called the focal spot. The smaller the focal spot, the sharper the X-ray image. The impact of the electrons on the anode generates heat. This is carried off by means of coolants and an anode of heat conducting copper. The tungsten disc fused into the end of the anode is called the target. Tungsten is used because of its hardness and extremely high melting temperature. The filament cathode and the anode are sealed in a highly evacuated glass envelope. This becomes the X-ray tube. The heating current that releases electrons from the filament is supplied by a step-down transformer. By regulating the filament current, the quantity of released electrons can be controlled. The higher the current, the greater the number of electrons. A step-up transformer supplies the high voltage required. Direct current is attained through a rectifier or through a self-rectifying X-ray tube. In order to generate X-rays, the electrons must strike the target at a very high speed. By increasing the voltage across the tube, that is, by increasing the difference in potential between the filament and anode, the electrons will travel faster toward the target, generating X-rays of greater intensity. This voltage may run into hundreds of thousands of volts and is therefore measured in kilovolts. The tube current is very small, however, and is measured in milliampere. When the energy imparted to the electrons is converted into X-rays, it travels in waves that are similar to ordinary light waves, but of much shorter wavelengths. This wave motion may be suggested in this manner, although in this symbolic representation, only one segment of the total radiation is shown. 
The higher the voltage used, the shorter the wavelength of the X-rays. The shorter the wavelength, the greater their penetrative power. But actually, in any X-ray beam, there may be rays of various wavelengths. The beam, of course, is invisible to the eye. The X-ray tube and transformers are usually enclosed in a grounded, shockproof housing. If we place an object on photographic film and turn on the X-ray beam, a shadow picture of the object will be formed on the film. If the object is of uniform thickness, the photographic density on the film will also be uniform. Any defect in an object usually has a lower density than the surrounding material. More rays will therefore pass through the defects than through the adjacent area. The film then gets more exposure under the defects and dark spots appear on the film. If the same exposure is given to a piece of two different thicknesses, fewer X-rays will penetrate the thicker section. A defect in the thin part will be revealed by the film, but the defect in the thick part may not. If a longer exposure is made, the defect in the thick section will eventually be revealed, but the film under the thin part may then be overexposed. Greater penetration of the thick side of the object is made possible by increasing the kilovoltage. This shortens the wavelengths, permitting more rays to penetrate the object. This results in a faster exposure, but the film may again be overexposed on the thin side. Therefore, whenever there is a marked difference in thickness, two exposures should be made, one for each thickness, unless special techniques are employed. When the difference in thickness is only slight, however, one radiograph will accurately reveal all flaws. In making a setup for radiography, the tube should be placed as far as practical from the object and film to make the defect appear as near to actual size as possible. If the source of the X-rays is too close to the object, the shadow picture of the defect will appear larger than it really is because of the spread of the beam. When the tube is further away from the object, the defect will appear more nearly actual size. Some of the X-rays which pass through the object are scattered and tend to overexpose the film. To get a sharp picture, these random rays must be controlled as much as possible. Placing the film on a lead-covered table helps to minimize this backscatter. X-rays will not penetrate a thick sheet of lead. To confine the X-rays which scatter and reflect in the room, the walls of the radiographic room are also lined with lead. Since repeated exposure to X-radiation is injurious to living tissue, the operator always remains out of the room while the picture is being made. Remember that there are four major factors which must be considered in making a radiograph. One, the tube current. Two, the voltage across the tube. This controls the speed of the electrons and hence the wavelength of the X-rays. The higher the voltage, the shorter the wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the more intensity and the greater the penetration. Three, the focus film distance. This is adjusted to obtain the most accurate image of the defects in the piece. Four, the exposure time. This is arrived at in terms of the density and thickness of the piece. When a radiograph is made, the operator's procedure is at all times guided by an understanding of the nature of X-rays and their control. 
It is important to keep an accurate record of each radiograph taken and of each exposure. Not only the density of the material, but its thickness must also be considered. The operator is helped in his work by available information on the application of x-rays to various metals. This is a typical technique chart. It shows, for example, that a piece of steel one inch thick requires a kilo voltage of 110, an exposure time of 1800 milliampere seconds, and that the distance from the focal spot to the film should be 36 inches. The kilo voltage, the exposure time, and focus film distance required for this particular piece are determined from the chart and entered on the worksheet. In the dark room, lighted only by a safety light, the operator now loads a film holder. He selects a film size large enough to cover the area to be radiographed. He is careful not to buckle a large X-ray film. The first step in making the setup is a check of the focus film distance. There is a mark on the tube housing which locates the focal spot on the tube. In this case, a slight adjustment is needed to bring the focus film distance to the required 36 inches. If the focus film distance is correct, a better image will result. To make certain that the X-ray beam is directed to the center of the proper area, a telescopic pointer is often used. Each radiograph is identified by means of lead symbols. These are placed on the film holder and the object. The preparations for radiography of this gear blank are now completed. As a safety factor, this X-ray unit is wired so that it cannot be operated while the door is open, and the X-ray control unit is always separated from the tube head by a lead-lined wall. This is the switch to turn on the main circuit. The next step is to set the required voltage, in this case, 110 kilovolts. The major selector will adjust the kilovoltage to the approximate value. The minor selector is for more precise adjustments. The next step is to set the proper exposure time as given by the worksheet. 
Here the operator arrives at the exposure time by dividing 1800 milliampere seconds by the tube current 15 milliamperes. The result, 120 seconds, two minutes. He presets the length of exposure by a timer. It shuts off the current automatically. The X-ray is now on. A rheostat is used to apply the power gradually. These few seconds prevent a sudden high voltage from damaging the tube. Most X-ray units are operated at a given milliamperage, but adjustments are possible as required by means of a filament control. When the exposure is completed, the X-ray shuts off automatically, but the main line should also be shut off after each exposure. The X-ray film is now developed. The technique is similar to ordinary darkroom procedure. The operator's hands, the room, and the equipment should be clean. It is important to use fresh solutions and accurate temperature control. For uniform development, the film should be agitated in the bath. It is then rinsed, fixed, washed, and dried. Now the radiograph reveals the hidden faults. These dark areas show gas inclusions. This gear blank is unsuitable for milling. Other radiographs obtained through this same process reveal other internal characteristics. Note the feathery appearance of the defects in this specimen. They indicate shrinkage of the material. At this point, there is also a large gas porosity. This is an aluminum casting showing extensive gas porosity, shrinkage, and misrun. These welded sections show, one, a good weld, two, porosity, three, a crack in the weld, and four, lack of fusion of the plate edges. This aluminum blower wheel shows extensive, very fine porosity throughout the entire rim, also some shrinkage. Skill in the interpretation of radiographs and in the use of X-ray equipment can only be acquired by study and practice. But the technician who has developed this skill can obtain information important to production control. He can also prevent needless waste of valuable materials and manpower. He can prevent serious failures that may cost lives.